The Celtics are a 60-win team. They're one of the best Celtics teams in franchise history. They've wrapped up the regular season, so you know what we're going to do on a Friday? We're going to appreciate the hell out of this regular season right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Brand, it's holiday season, drop Drew in the mix. And three from KP, no, we not on the Knicks. Flushing competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still being counts finest. Been a race team going up in the rafters. Watch the seeds gain and locked on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic, document and domination. Matter pen of back, they it's all seeds nation. Rain and Jays, how we started raising business, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. It's right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network where it's your team every day. And I've got you covered every day, Monday through Friday, plus bonus podcasts when they play on the weekends. <gasps> they do not play on Saturday. I get to take one day off. This is podcast number 20 in a row. So, hey, so, let me just sprain my AC joint, patting myself on the back there for, you know, talking for half an hour. Woo, yay. Uh, I'm John Corrales. If you don't know me by now, if you're new, I'm uh, covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. Played ball a long time ago. Today, it's a very simple podcast. We are going to appreciate the Celtics. Just appreciate this regular season because the regular season is basically over. With six games to play, there's nothing left to play for. Let's just take this weekend and savor the flavor, and we're going to do it with our buddy Tom Westerholm. Tom underscore NBA on Twitter. Tom, how you feeling, buddy? I'm feeling good, man. I'm ready to do some some appreciating. Yeah. It's like yeah. a good old, we don't appreciate things anymore. We don't stop to smell roses anymore. This country oh. used to make things. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get my old man yells at cloud graphic. <laughs> Let's just have that at the ready now. I made yeah. it. I like it. So here we are. All right. Uh, I'll try. I'll try to. I'll try to. I'll try to lob it to you as much as possible. Sure. So, there, this isn't even a hey. Later on, we'll talk about this. We're just going to spend the whole season, the, the whole podcast, looking back at a regular season. This is not, uh, you know, people thinking, oh, oh, you're gonna you're gonna hang a banner for the regular season. No, no, that's not what we do around here. We're still like, it's it's. It's not exactly championship or bust. Like, we're not going to be, like, crazy about that. I think it's okay to take a second here and just look at what they've done and say, you know what? This has been pretty damn good. I'll just start with this. And maybe this is an old man yells at cloud kind of situation. I, I'm just – I cannot fathom people not – enjoying a regular season just because they they kind of had trouble and didn't didn't finish the job in the past. Okay, they did what they did against Miami last year. They didn't get past the Golden State Warriors two, two years ago. No one is sitting there saying, like I said, no one's sitting there saying raise a regular season banner. No one's sitting there saying they've accomplished what they need to accomplish or anything like that. But what I am saying is, you know what? This has been a lot of fun. And if you can't bring yourself to say, you know what? This has been a lot of fun. And also, I would be very upset if they didn't win a championship. You can have both things. You can be both things. And I think it's a social media thing. I think people feel like they want to impress impress their, like, you know, you're, you're a fan of Felger and Maz. And you're like, oh, I'm going to be just like them and angry. And, like, they're, they're putting on a show. You're you're just kind of, like, doing whatever. Like, so, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like not there's, impressed there's by room you. for both. Yeah, they're, they, yes, that's right. Yeah, no, you know, you know who else thinks there's room for both? Joe Missoula, who said after the game, yeah, like obviously to your point, right? Joe Missoula wasn't hanging a banner. Joe Missoula wasn't like going in there like, you know, <laughs> standing on a standing on a on a on a big uh military uh you know yeah, mission, accomplished. mission accomplished in the background. <laughs> no, Joe Missoula was doing, but you know what he did do? He like, you know. Stood in the locker room and said, you know, high fived everyone. Walked into the locker room, high fived everyone, and said, "Hey, great job, guys! <laughs> like this is yeah. you should appreciate this." And absolutely, they should. Um, you know, I, I, it was it was kind of striking. I don't remember. I don't remember which which guy said it. It might have been Missoula. It might have been might have been Jalen. It was somebody last night um, in the post game said, "You know, you just don't know if this is going to happen again. Like there, there's no guarantee." Oh, that's right. 
that you're going to have the best record in the NBA ever again. There's no guarantee that you're going to be on a 60 win team. 60 wins doesn't just, you don't trip, stumble and fall into 60 wins. That is very difficult to do. You can, you can get a number one seed, you know, a couple of times and never hit 60 wins. Like this is, this is a pretty special regular season. And I think, you know, if you're a Celtics fan, one, appreciate the wins because there's been a lot of them. And number two, appreciate the way this team plays. Like this is right. good basketball. This is good hoops. And like, you know, there's not like, I think more so than in previous seasons for sure. Right. Like, you know, more so than the seasons where guys might've gotten, you know, like, like kind of puckered up a little bit, you know, if, if the game was sliding away from them a little bit, or, um, you know, guys might've like played down to their competition or looked ahead too much. Like we talked about on the last episode, this, like, that's not what's, happened this year this year has been a really really good basketball team playing good basketball fun basketball um fun fun little storylines i mean how fun are most of these guys to watch like how fun is Derek white to watch it's just yeah right it's just beautiful hoops and like if you like if you like the game and you like the nba and you like the celtics this is a season to appreciate for that reason i think so it's funny so I, i'm I don't like to share personal conversations that I had behind the scenes, but I don't think he's going to mind here. I, I, I bumped into Sam Presti, uh, GM of the Oklahoma City Thunder, Emerson basketball guy. So I'm an Emerson basketball guy. I've known Sam since he was in college. Um, so it's it's a big, it's always a big Emerson basketball reunion when OKC comes to town. So a bunch of us were there and all of that stuff. And I saw him after the game, and you know, and just we're just talking. And I said, oh, it's great to see you, man. You got a hell of a team, you know, you know, despite what happened here tonight. And he just, the reason I bring it up is because his reaction was, eh, one of 82. He's like, literally, and it's, there's no reason to say it to me as a member of the media. This is a guy that I, I used to practice against him, right? Before he was anything in the NBA, he was a dude that would, you know, would try to check me in a practice. And, you know, that that's that's the relationship that we have. And he's just like, yeah, one of 182. And I bring that up to be like, this, that's that's the NBA attitude towards a lot of the things that happen. The Celtics, for all of the comments in the YouTube page and the things that I read on Boston Sports Journal, and I'm not trying to like crap all over people who are who are just in a different mindset, but like what I'm trying to do is get you to understand that the losses to the 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 Atlanta Hawks, okay, tough, you know, it's not you know not the best, but also. One of 82, each one of those, one of 82, two of 82, right? The Celtics have 16 losses. They don't play down, always play down to the competition. <clears throat> they don't do that. If they did, they wouldn't have only lost 16 times, right? They they don't blow every 20-point lead. Like, yes, th did they get some down to 10 and some down to 5? Guess what? In this season... We've seen more 20 point leads go away this season in the NBA than ever before. So it's not just the Boston Celtics that lose 20 point leads. And guess what? The Celtics have also recovered and held on and won those games because they've won 60 and only lost 16. Next behind them is Minnesota and Denver, who have lost 23 games. The Celtics are seven games ahead of those teams that is amazing to me and like this is why i'm saying like take a second to think about and appreciate only 13 other celtics teams have reached 60 wins i'm yeah. doing this show with a picture of all the banners behind me not all those teams have won 60 games right so now you have to add to that now you have to do the next step and say 60 wins plus the banner or else people are going to be like, eh, you know, because there are teams that did win 60 games and didn't wear, didn't raise one of these. So, but it, it is in and of itself at this moment, something special that hasn't happened very often. And whenever something special that hasn't happened very often, there's an appropriate level of here we are on a Friday, April, this is the April 5th show. Let's take a second in April 5th when there are six regular season games that yeah. we're we're going to, you know, whatever. Let's take this moment now to say, hey, Boston Celtics, good freaking job this season, man, because you guys deserve a second. 
to kind of bask in the glory. I'm going to let you react to that uh, in just a second. We'll get back to that. And some stats that kind of show uh, some inter interesting things, Tom, shows that we haven't done. One show in particular we didn't do this season that I think kind of is worth celebrating as well. We'll talk about that next. Today's show is brought to you by Robin Hood. Did you know that even a 401k, even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robin Hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. Is that right? No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. Now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out the Lockdown Sports today. Forget ESPN and all their yelling and screaming. Forget Fox Sports and all their yelling and screaming and fake arguments. This is a much more uh civilized network so go check it out free 24 7 on lockdown sports today real conversation real debates real people who feel real things and mean what they say so go check it out on youtube 24 7 on youtube or the free fire amazon fire tv channels app part of the lockdown podcast network it's your team every day let's continue appreciating the hell out of these boston celtics so basically what i've been saying is sometimes tom you know you know you want to get back in shape you want to hit the gym Maybe you hit the gym for two, three weeks straight. You pop into the mirror. You go, hey, you know what? Yeah, there's a little, a little definition in there. You know, I got a little, got a little peck coming in here. I got a little, you know, sure. I, 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 I appreciate my progress. Makes me want to go do more. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to look yeah. in the mirror and be like, you know what? Yeah. Absolutely. I think, I mean, look, and I think you, you kind of mentioned this before the break. Like this is the perfect time to do it because when the season is over, when the regular season wraps up, I know there's going to be like a little bit of time and we'll probably do some similar stuff, you know, at that point too. like, just, you know, touch on some of the similar stuff just because it's, you know, it's, it's fun. It's fun. But this is, but like at that point, right. A lot of that is going to be page turning to the, to the postseason. you know, like, yeah, yeah. Season gets to an end. You gotta, you know, you gotta kind of turn the page a little bit, but like, yeah, I mean, this is. I think one of the things that really struck me is I, I saw on, uh, on on Twitter today, um, Harrison Fagan from the uh, from SB Nation that is a is a is a Lakers reporter, and he <laughs> he noted he's like, yeah, one of the things that really strikes me about this Celtics team is just the way that they you know they just find a way to get motivated every single day. And it's like, you know, if you've caught the attention <laughs> of Lakers guys, <laughs> you're a Celtics team. Hold on, you've kind of done the, something here. <laughs> the Lakers guy is saying, wow, these Celtics get motivated all the time. And Celtics fans are sitting there being like, they can't get up for these games. If That should tell you something. <laughs> that should tell you something. There's one dude in the YouTube comments who just showed up recently. One of his comments was just writing championship like 12 times and then saying, that's all we care about. First of all, like, okay, am I not supposed to do shows until they win a championship? I'm kind of flies in the face of the, your team every day, but like, do you, he just wants you to honest, say the word championship for 29 minutes. Yeah. Right. And then I now a word from from a championship. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes of just championship, championship, championship. Yeah. Championship. championship. <laughs> so anyway, you're, you were, you were saying, no, I, mean, I just, I, I think that's, that speaks to, you know, how, how impressive this team has been, right? Like, like it's, it, this isn't something that is like, I think other teams can, can look at the Celtics too and kind of be like, man, they are, I, you know, like they're really good. And, and I think it's going to be interesting to see how kind of like the predictions break down before the postseason, just because, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people and, and kind of understandably so are just like, Hey, 
it's great. You had a great regular season. You've had other great regular seasons. Prove it to me in the postseason. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's some some fairness to that. Um, but that's not really what we're talking about. You know, like what we're talking about is like, dang, this is this, this has been fun ball. You know, <laughs> this, has yeah. been, this has been good hoops. The starting five has only played 35 games together. That's something if, if you're doing a podcast and one of the topics is the starting five has played 35 games together. I would say that's something you do when you're the Phoenix Suns and you're sitting there in the, you know, okay, you've climbed into the sixth seed. You're 45 and 31. Good season, winning season, not quite what you want it to be. And you're like, well, 45 games. You may have won 50 games if the starting five didn't just play 35 games together. Uh, but the Celtics have won 60 games with the starting five only playing 35 games together. That's just wild depth, right? And it's it's funny because I think we've and, and look uh, just for everybody. I'm knocking on wood. I'm you know risking my dog going crazy, thinking that there's somebody at the door. Um, like. I've I've heard a lot, seen a lot, like, oh, wow, the Celtics have been really healthy this year. They've had a lot of really good health luck this year. And, like, to an extent, that's true, right? Like, the, nobody's gotten, you know, any kind of significant injury. But that, I mean, it's it's honestly, it's more just that they have so many good players that, like, guys can rest. Because, like, Chris Dapps Porzingis sits out a couple of games, and you're like, meh, all right. Like, yeah. <laughs> rest up, big guy. <laughs> He's got, you know, <laughs> Al Horford and right. Luke Cornett can fill in for you. You know, it's like... And that, and that's you know I mean Derek White's sat out some games this year he doesn't usually do that Tatum has sat out some yeah. games this year like these like there have been opportunities for guys to get to the end of the year healthy um, in part because like it's not that you don't notice that they're gone but it's just but like you kind of don't notice that they're gone there's just so <laughs> many good players that it's just like yeah all right yeah go win anyway you can sit Jalen Brown Kristaps Porzingis and Derek White. And your starting lineup has Drew Holiday, Jason Tatum, and Al Horford. And, you know, you're and, you're and like Peyton Pritchard, who's been awesome. That's right. You know, right. Like, so that's, that's right. So what I'm saying is most teams don't have the luxury of even starting a starting lineup of Holiday, Tatum, and Horford. Yeah. Like that would be a team just just that starting. Like just take let's pretend it's a video game and you have two separate Celtics teams. One is Jalen, Porzingis, and White, and the rest of the guys. And the other one is Tatum, Horford, and Holiday, and the rest of the guys, right? So they don't exist on each other's teams. Those are both in the East. That, that's your 4-5 matchup, right? Tatum, Maybe th t Tatum, Horford, Holiday would be like a trio that like w would spark arguments over whether or not the Celtics have a big three. And that's just like three. That's dudes. right. That's right. That's right. Right. So, and like you, you have white uh, Jalen and Porzingis. And you're like, that's what a great mix, a wing, <laughs> a point guard and a big, what a great mix you have there. Like that just all works. It, it, it's the same thing with both, both of those. Like, and now you put them both together and it's like, you know, your peanut butter got into my chocolate. No, your chocolate got into my peanut butter. Like, no, this is a Reese's peanut butter cup. And it's amazing. And that's the thing, right? It it turned into a peanut butter cup, not something. I don't I don't I don't have a good analogy. I, now I might need an analogy <laughs> man to step in here, and because like you look at the 2018-19 team, right? That team had equivalent, maybe not equivalent, but comparable talent on it, right? That 2018-19 sure. team was stacked, and they never turned into a peanut butter cup. <laughs> that team was yeah, that team was rotten milk from the jump. And, uh, <laughs> like you know, that's. That, that that's another thing again you know we talk about things to appreciate about this team is that like th those those six players you know plus the bench guys like everybody is just gelled perfectly come together really well um that doesn't always happen and and the no. Celtics fans if you have if you have any kind of memory you were you you should be aware of the fact that that meld doesn't always happen let's talk about like guys things that have surprised us um we'll do that when we come back but this is this is where I want to introduce the show that we haven't done this year, which is is Jason Tatum playing too many minutes? Not once, not once have we had that conversation. Yeah. Not once has that come up. Not once has that question been asked. Not once have we gone into the 
Do you think Jason's playing like way too much? No, it's what just is Joe a Joe doing. That's right. Because this team is so deep and there's so many guys that Joe hasn't had to like be like, oh, we've got to win at all costs. It's got to be Tatum at all costs. These guys are playing great. they they're winning non-Tatum minutes like the fourth quarter against the uh the Thunder. That was that was Tatum sitting on the bench and he got to sit the whole fourth quarter. So that brings me to my surprise, which is Joe Missoula, and we'll talk about that when we come back. Today's show is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. It's your destination for sports, live games, highlights, in-depth analysis. It's all there on Fire TV, which offers amazing viewing experiences with their fine array of smart TVs. But if you like the TV that you have and you're like, "Eh, I don't feel like buying a new one. Okay. The Fire TV stick plugs right into your existing TV and gives you access to millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free live TV. So Whatever sports you want to watch, MLB is back. NCAA tournament is here, uh, about to get to crown a champion soon. Uh, you want to have a Fire TV, and they've recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, including Lockdown Celtics, which was on the Lockdown Sports Today uh, 24-7 streaming channel, which you can get on the Amazon Fire TV channels app so go check it out find out more check out fire tv channels check out fire tv check out their alexa devices if you haven't you should and you can do it at amazon.com slash locked on fire tv that's amazon.com slash locked on fire tv today's show also brought to you by nissan are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner our friends at nissan have a lineup of suvs with the capability to take your adventure to the next level. That includes the 2024 Nissan Rogue, perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built in as you're always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Forget the wires, their Google Assistant, Google Maps, Google Play Store, all built right into the 12.3 inch HD screen infotainment system. So the 2024 Nissan Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the Nissan Armada, the 2024 Armada, which I saw. I was in New Orleans. I saw it outside my hotel, dropping a bunch of people off because it can fit up to eight people in first class luxury and style. I stopped. I stopped in my tracks. I was like, ooh, that is a pretty SUV. And it changes what you can expect because it's also a rugged 4x4. So you can tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, the classic Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Thank you for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Lockdown NBA. It's covering the whole league. I got the show on Wednesdays with Jake Madison. Go check it out wherever you get your podcasts. Watch it on YouTube. Get into the comment section there. Watch the whole league. It's fun. It's a fun show. My unbiased opinion. All right, Tom. So any surprises here? I started with Joe Missoula. And my my one of my biggest surprises here is just that he took as big a step forward as he did. Like I I saw, I thought last season I saw promise in him. Uh I was definitely not one of the people who was like, oh yeah, he's got to go. Uh, but to for him to come back, put this staff together, and to have this mindset. Uh, it was, I thought it was funny after that game against the Thunder, Porzingis was like, Joe uh, has a way of like getting to us, unlocking something with us when he wants to go to it. And I was like, well, what is it? He's like, I don't know, but blah, 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 blah. As he walked out after like the cameras and recorders were off, I'm like, don't know or don't want to say. And he's like, mm, ah, eh, you know, so I'm like, yeah, there's something that Joe's got. Uh, he's got the room. He's got their attention. And you don't go 60 and 16 without having the room. So yeah. no, big sure credit don't. to Joe Missoula. People are, oh, he didn't call a timeout to stop this particular run against the Hawks. Like, okay. But he his his coaching has been, I think, very good all season and and even better than I thought it would be. I agree with that. And I think a big part of it, and I, I could be wrong, right? Like I'm I'm just guessing here. Like, because I mean, we're all we're all are we're not in those discussions we're not in the, to your point right the, the, we have no idea um i think the the he, he's not perfect and no nobody's perfect no coach is going to be perfect but like the one thing that you never question with missoula like is 
Well, I guess there's two things you never question. One, he's always going to be as prepared as he can possibly be. And the reason that he's always going to be prepared as he can possibly be is because, number two, that man cares so much about this team, his players, this game, right? Like winning basketball games. Like he just cares. He like, and it, it, it comes through, you know, I, I think yeah. that really sh like it shows in the way that he like, he, he doesn't just, he doesn't just study the game. He thinks about the game. He doesn't just kind of take what other people are doing and try to implement it. He like, he, he's like, okay, but why yeah. do they do that? Like, like yeah. what, you know, um, you know, he, he, I think that speaks volumes of his intelligence, like his intelligence as a coach, but also just like if you're a player, I mean, uh, that's the kind of guy you want to play for. That, that's a guy who, yeah. who cares about you and, and who wants you to succeed and wants like the whole thing to succeed. I think if you know, I, I think that's a big part of it. I, I mean, certainly he's a good basket. Like, certainly he's a great basketball mind. Right. Like, um, yeah. you know. Any of these coaches, you ask them anything about basketball and, and it'll take about, you know, 10, it'll take them about <laughs> five to 10 seconds of talking before you're just like, oh, dude, this went way yeah. beyond my capability yeah, of yeah, understanding. Yeah. And, and I know a little bit about basketball, but like, you know, so certainly he's a great basketball mind, but I think, I think it's, it's, there's this level of passion, this level of, um, you know, about, of just caring about things that kind of has set him apart a little bit this year. Look, Adrian Griffin is a great basketball mind, right? Like, like he became an NBA head coach for a reason. He failed at it um, in his first try. He'll probably get another one. But any one of these guys at this level. we're watching uh, with his Bucks team is that Adrian Griffin probably could get another shot. <laughs> I, don't yeah, know that, yeah. I don't know that all yeah. the, the failure was entirely on him so far. Yeah, you know what? The five hundred under Doc, they yeah. they were uh, set won seventy percent of their games under him. So, yeah, <laughs> that was the right move. That was the right move. Uh, so anyway, uh, but the point is, coaches who get fired, coaches don't even make it to the NBA. Those guys are incredible basketball minds. Absolutely, it's the emotional stuff. It's connecting with your team. The NBA is such a different animal. It's so different that it's not just you go here, you go here, then you go here. Oh, this guy's got great after timeout plays. That makes him a great coach. But no, if he can't connect with his team, like uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Blatt with the with the yeah, Cavaliers. David Blatt. Yeah, David Blatt is a Hall of Fame coach. Yeah. He's like a legend over. He's a legend overseas. Came here like a season and a half. And was like, you done. You are done, son. So that's like. You, you have to have the right mentality to connect to these guys. Missoula connects to these guys because he has a humility, right? Like it's yeah. so funny when, when Charles Barkley was like, Oh, I would knock a coach out if he tried to block my shot. And they asked Joe about, it, he's like, yeah, you I, I, I'm very open to being knocked out. Like you got to be willing to get knocked out sometimes. It's like, what that means is you got to be willing to put like what you think and what you do on the line. Yeah. And have it get blown up in your face so you can learn from it. When when they are screwing up left and right and have like that horrible loss against the Lakers, and he's like, I hated the fact that we lost this game, but I love the fact that we went through it because that's getting knocked out. When you get knocked out, you can't help but get up and be like, damn, what did I do wrong? Because that sucked, and I don't want to go through that again. And that's the learning process. And he's got a knack for figuring that stuff out. You get hit. You learn how to take a punch sometimes. Like, it's like, you know. That's right. Learn how like, to stand your ground. Learn how to, like, sometimes you've got to take. Boxing matches are somebody wins. And the person who wins gets hit, like, 300 times. you got to take a punch. Yeah. Yeah. No question. Um, can I, can I real quick uh, do yeah. my guy that I'm, like, I've been super. I We just mentioned him a little bit. But, Peyton Pritchard has been so good this year. And I didn't think, yes, he has. I didn't think that he had all, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't, I didn't think that he had all this on this team. I mean, I thought he was like a, a pretty good little player. Thought he could like, you know, maybe mm -hmm. get some minutes somewhere else. I didn't think he would break into the rotation on a Celtics team. This stacked like that, that he would, and that he would be like a pretty important player. Like the, the fact that he can, you know, Mix and match different lineups, you know, slide in here, slide in here, slide in there. <laughs> um, 
just like all the different little things that he can do, all, all the ways that it's like he's smaller than everybody else, but it just he doesn't get picked on. Like you don't see guys picking on Peyton Pritchard the way you would think that a guy no. his height would get picked on because he's just he just looks so unpleasant to play against, like to try to, yeah. try to do things against. He's a little slappy, like just getting the getting his hands in there, getting you know, it's just he's been really good. I've been really impressed by him, and I think like you know, you look ahead to, to, to that contract he signed and it's like, I mean, you know, at the time it was like, wow, good for him. He locked up like, you know, like longer term money. And all of a sudden it's like, man, the Celtics might have, might yeah. have a pretty good little bargain there. Like that's, you know, he's that's, a good player. He's a good player. I, I've been really impressed with him this year. Super impressed with him. I look, and I've, I've, I've been a skeptic and I continue to be a skeptic in the playoffs. Like he's, he's definitely the one guy I'm like, still have to show me in the playoffs. Just sure, that, that he can't. But I tell you what, I'm not, I'm not where I've come from on him is I'm not dismissing him for sure. Yeah. I'm not like in the past, I'd be like, you can't play him in the playoffs. It's just, that's how it is. Now I'm like, no, I think you can play him in the playoffs. Just watch the matchups and see like, it might be a situation where two minutes in, you're like, oh, nope, this isn't the game for him. Yeah. And it, game if that's game one, you still go back to him in game two. And like, you just go and maybe at a different time of the game with yeah. a different matchup. So yeah. I, I've come around a lot on him. Sam Hauser in the same same vein. Sam yeah. Hauser, incredibly impressive. Not just the, the like the defensive improvements. People will always say, "Look, he's he's staying in front of his guys. He's playing pretty good defense. Uh, he's he's gotten a lot more in, inside the arc this year." But shooting on the move, running into his shots, relocating, recognizing what the play is, what the play needs, where he needs to be. The footwork has been amazing. I am just sometimes I watch rewatch his his like just footwork and standing, running full speed sprint down the corner, catching a sh catching a right handed shooter, catching it and stopping and turning in the left corner to get a shot off and not hitting even the net going through. Like wow, amazing! So shout That's out good. Sam Hauser, also incredibly impressive. And listen, while we're shouting out whites, Luke Cornett has been good, and <laughs> Derek White has been awesome. So I haven't seen a white kill jazz like this. I can't remember Cornett's joke. I can't, yeah. I can't quote Sam, it. But, uh, what's his name in uh, La La Land? Yeah, Ryan Gosling was, in La La Land. Yeah. Ryan, yeah, that's right. That's the line. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, funny. honestly, I, though, I, I mean, no joke. Like Derek White has become one of my favorite NBA players to watch. Just the, um, just the the way he plays is just. It's it's just yeah. I, I I don't know how I, if you if you you know control F the amount of times I've said good hoops or good basketball this podcast it would be a lot. But Derek White <laughs> is like the definition of it. You know, it's just when he so he's just it's just good hoops. He just plays good hoops. I don't know what else to say. He's so good. Like this is the thing about this team. Derek White just so good. Drew Holiday so just good. Just so good. overqualified. Just so good at basketball. Porzingis. What a matchup! Probably exactly, it, literally exactly what Brad Stevens was like. Yes, this is like you wondered why I said this is not a single hair out of place on this on this portrait of perfect season for Kristaps Porzingis. Uh, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Kristaps Porzingis as just the happiest guy in the NBA. Again, just have to every time he walks out. Fist pumps, hey, oh, points, finger guns, winks, thumbs ups. Like, just, he is the Turtle happiest night. dude. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, the other, like, yesterday, he's uh, sitting there in the tunnel getting ready to walk out, and I'm walking out at the same time. And he's like, hey, gives me a fist. Like, you don't have to acknowledge me. I'm the media. I'm walking out to my seat. You're getting ready to go play an NBA game. He's like, oh, fist bump. I'm like. Okay, thanks, man. Go have fun out there. He's like, yes, sir. And then we walked out. I'm like, this is just a what a fun dude. So much fun. Yeah. Yeah. What Other, else? Who else is fun? Who else is fun? I Al Horford. Like mentioned Svee Mikhailu at this point. Like, also fun. You know, yeah. like just, uh, there's been a trend here. <laughs> yeah. Look, bottom line is we know there's a lot left to be done. Yeah. And I'll end it with this. There's a lot left to be done. And there's plenty of time to talk about that. That week leading up to the first playoff game, we're going to be looking ahead. We're going to be breaking down matchups. This is, but you know what? On April 5th, 
with two a week, two weeks left to go, you know, before any playoff game start, just pour yourself a drink. Well, you're probably listening to this on Friday morning. If you hey, if you want to drink on a Friday morning, whatever. People do that all the time. It's called brunch. Go and just raise a glass and be like, you know, I just watched seven months or six months of really fun Celtics basketball. And just appreciate, soak it in, take a breath, and then you can flip it on Monday, move forward and be like, okay, let's see how they start getting ready for the playoffs. Let's see how they start. Because now we start the next part of the journey. But there's a nice little gap here where you can be like, okay, take a breath, smell the roses, and you're not losing anything. You're not losing sight of anything. You're not losing it. You're not looking ahead and like letting go of the rope. This is an opportunity for us on the outside to be like, good job, Boston Celtics. Also, it's on the back. It's physically impossible for us to let go of the rope. We're not playing games. You're not We're playing not the games. Right. The fans are not playing the right. games. We can do whatever we want. We're not we do whatever we want. <laughs> That's right. They they're going. They're have focused fun. on a champion. Let's little, just little. have some fun. Enjoy the Celtics. Enjoy the podcast. Enjoy Tom Westerholm, yeah. who is a fine podcaster yeah. and also very surprisingly good. I didn't expect this from Tom Westerholm either, but man, this guy stepped up this season. You know, yeah. I'm uh, I'm like Peyton Pritchard. <laughs> He's getting right in there. <laughs> Appreciate you. We're appreciating. Yeah. Never mind. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you everybody for listening. Thank you everybody for watching. Go have fun with it. Let's just have fun. This is a great, I like it's a Friday. Just enjoy it. Have a good weekend. Uh, Celtics are really damn good. They're a really damn good basketball team. And hopefully they can turn around here, get ready for the playoffs and make that deep championship run that we're asking for. So I will be here for every step of the way and beyond after they win the championship podcasting live from the parade. You heard it here from me first. Uh, so make sure you're subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Watch a show on YouTube. Hop in the comment section. I would love it if you shared the podcast, spread the word, tell your friends that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here in the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.